Welcome to Sober Doc Coffee, a weekly coffee chat sharing experience, strength, and hope for anyone on the sober road to recovery. You can download Sober Doc Coffee weekly on all podcast platforms and check us out on Instagram at Sober Doc Coffee Podcast and on Twitter at Sober Coffee Pod. To learn more about us and to help support these sessions, visit online at Sober Doc Coffee. Here are your hosts, two guys on their own path to recovery, Mike and Glenn. Let's join them at the coffee shop. Good morning, Glenn. Hey, what's up, my brother? What is up with you, man? <clears throat> not much, man. I, I just said, man, if it's not now, it's never. I know. I love Let's that. Let's get at it. Is that some, is, are you, is somebody else's phrase? Or no, I just, just came up. In your head? I just, it's not it, now, just it's never. I think that's my only original one I've ever come up with. Oh, uh, well, I know. Dude, it's the early morning, man. 3.30 this morning. Come on. Good morning. On a Saturday morning. Yeah. Come on, man. Did I'm you just a... bounce out of bed or did you crawl out of bed? No, I kind of just... Uh, <clears throat> Neither. I kind of, uh, although my app says that I have superb, oh, well, superb. readiness today. All right. But All right. I, I'm not sure if I really feel that. My app says I need an app. Yeah. Because I don't have an app. My app all day long says I'm in the 98% stress zone and, and I need to rest and take and take a nap. Uh, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. My, my whole life's like that. So what's up, brother? Hey, we got a really exciting episode. Today. Uh, I know, right? This is going to be kinda, fun. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> And a little interaction. Yeah, sometimes, man, we have this all planned out, and sometimes we just shoot from the hip, and we don't know what we're doing. But uh, but we, we know what we're doing today, and... Uh, we got a, ta- got a table for three? Uh, I love table for three, and this is a really sexy one. I know, the return of, the son of. Um, hey, Steve, welcome back, man. Stevie G. Thank you, guys. Good morning. All Great right, to so, be here. Great to have you here, Stevie. So I'll set this up a little bit. Stevie G... Um, I, I've known him for five plus years. Um, he is a um, sober soldier, sober oh, missionary. I like um, man, I'm on fire. I, mean, I, I, know. I think I am superb. Sober today, right? soldier, sober soldier for 32 years. Yeah, right. uh, Steve is the executive director for a nonprofit here in Chicago. It's a sober living home that is awesome. Helped. Sober living home. It's, it's a Arcosa. R C O S A dot org. org. Right. <clears throat> They've helped thousands of people achieve long term sobriety. Most sober living homes, and, and I'm making this number up, but the average stays like three, four weeks. Um, our code is like 11.87 months. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, just really long term sobriety. Real foundation building. <clears throat> yeah. But, I mean, we love Stevie G. Welcome, Stevie G. Thank you. So, so we, we have a specific purpose for today's oh my goodness. episode, right? It's crazy. Um, so, so Stevie G loves sobriety, and, and, and Steve, I'll ask you a little bit about you know sobriety and and Arcosa, but we really want to talk today about coffee. We, we do we're sober dot <laughs> coffee. I, I mean, know, it's awesome. Like we're right in our right in our groove spot right here. I know. We, we so so hey, all right, Steve. First of all, let's let's be grown up about this, right? Um, <laughs> Who are you? What are you about? Um, tell, tell us about your kind of sobriety. Just a couple minutes, because I know that you can go on for three hours. Um, 32 just a couple years. You can go on for 32 <laughs> years. Right, totally. And and a part of that, um, just kind of give it a snippet of Arcosa. So let's just frame it with, with that, and then we'll, we'll move on to coffee from there. No pressure. Timer's on. Go. That's right. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I love you guys. Grateful for you. Thank you for having me on here for a minute. It's been a minute since I was able to join you guys. Um, I'm really happy for Sober Dot Coffee, and I'm proud of what you guys have done. So thank you. So yeah, I, I am a recovering alcoholic. I hope you guys don't mind that I said that. <clears throat> Sober Soldier, I like that. Um, yeah, my journey began back in 1992. Um, I had hit a bottom sufficient enough for me to acquire the level of humility that apparently was necessary for me to basically completely give myself to the simple program. I'm very grateful. I'm grateful to Alcoholics Anonymous, the grace of God, and wonderful men like you. You guys are, are blazing the path for many, and I just love and respect you guys so much. So. Yeah, short story. Uh, I bottomed out, crawled into these rooms. You guys accepted me, the last house on the block, as they say. Mm. And uh, you welcomed me with open arms. And uh, I had that uh, state of reasonableness, which I was beaten into 
mm-hmm. where I said, okay, I'll do anything you guys say. I did whatever anyone said and suggested, and I learned and implemented the new design for living that we call the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. I implemented it in my daily life, and, and here we are. The reason I started our coast was because after treatment, I was sent, which I didn't really have many options because when you're sleeping in the back of a Jeep and it's not even your yeah. Jeep, you don't have a lot of options. So sometimes, I went to a yeah. halfway house. Sometimes right. excellence is thrust upon us. Steve, was it was it like a Jeep Wrangler or like, <laughs> like the Grand Cherokee with like a TV Jeep. in there and stuff? No, it was a Jeep Renegade. It was Renegade. probably like an 87 Jeep Renegade. Mm. Wow. And um, thank God there was a soft cover in there, which became my blanket. And January of 92 was freaking cold. So January but of any year like, is freaking cold. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I went into the sober house and, you know, it was the bed I made. I needed to sleep in it. I needed to go through with dignity and grace. And I learned a lot. It certainly wasn't the way I would have done things and uh I, i'll mention my dear buddy stash that i grew up with he believed in me and he gave me an opportunity to begin the process of our costa he you know he believed in me and he had a couple free flats and uh he said let's let's give it a shot and uh i just felt i could do a little better than the place i was living at i think you treat people with dignity and respect and give them an opportunity to build their own foundation in a place that's dignified they create a group, uh, an energy of community, the we part of the program, and, you know, where we, we were, were taking the thing that was going to wipe us off the earth and make it our common solution and work together and travel the, the path together. It's a really cool thing. I know you guys know that very, very well because you guys are living examples of it. Yeah, you, um, know, what I, you know what I love about it? I mean, that was so if – if my timelines are correct, you know, you're 32 years sober, sober and, and our COSA – was kind of founded based on the experience you had in sober living right on the heels of you getting sober you're opening up a sober living house yeah i'm not sure i'd recommend it <laughs> and I'll be <laughs> Duly noted. I, didn't any, <laughs> I didn't know what i was doing but to me there was a divinely created divinely inspired and still to this day a divinely led mission i don't know why i had the opportunity to do it but i guess it was my calling i would definitely not recommend doing it at nine or ten months but it just fell together, you know, and um, it was it was a God thing. There's no doubt about it. Because I was just going to help a few alcoholics in the beginning. I love that line in the book. Nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intense work with other alcoholics. So I took that to heart because I, I did not want to go back. I was not going back. And I figured if I surrounded myself with recovering alcoholics, I would have a good chance. And maybe we could help others. And so far, it's been an absolute privilege and a blessing. So... That kind of uh, that's kind of how this thing started. God, that's Man, strong. That's, that, that's fantastic. That's strong. <clears throat> so you're sober. You live sober life. I know you have a family. I know you got kids. Great wife. Um, Arcosa keeping you busy. So so why coffee? What? Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Happened? So how does that weave into the story? So so what's this boiled out coffee? Well, let me just be honest here. I hated coffee <laughs> until I got sober. I hated sobriety until I got sober. <laughs> God bless you. Um, yeah, I drank coffee. The first c- coffee I had was at the AA meeting. I can tell you right now, it was Wicker Park Alamo Club. It was on Damon right off the division. And it was just hot brown water hmm. that I was grateful for because I didn't have any money. And I... I I had someone who turned me on to a, a better cup of coffee. I won't mention the brand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said, okay, this is good. And I just like coffee. And it wasn't until about maybe, I don't know, 12 years ago, I just started seeking out roasters, different roasters around the country. Because I really, I do love coffee. And, um, and I love sober dot coffee, I should have. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. And uh, I just started finding these roasters all around the country. And I... After about three, four, five years, I narrowed it down to three or four roasters that I thought were really consistent and good and good tasting. And I just kind of learned what they were doing. And then about two years ago, maybe, maybe a little over two years ago, I just, I got a little roaster. I said, I'm going to roast coffee. And I started roasting and I got a bigger roaster and I got more of these roasters and I just kept roasting. And then uh, to plug boiled owl coffee which the legal entity began on July 24th of last year. 
uh, just a little trivia there. But I was roasting, and I tasted. I, I shared it with some people, and they said, "Boy, that's that's pretty good." I'm like, "Really? I thought so too." And then I just made it a legal entity, and I've just been roasting pretty consistently now for about a year and a half. And so far, I've had a pretty good, uh, pretty good feedback. Most of the folks really like it, and I'm glad to hear that because I was biased. I thought it was just great coffee, but I needed. Just like recovery, I needed other people to tell me my perceptions were off <laughs> in life. <clears throat> and so far, people have liked it. And boiled owls, you know, we're not—we don't want to be a, a Starbucks or anything. That's not our goal. Our goal is to create small batch, high quality coffee. And I think so far we've been doing that. Awesome. So I have to ask you, what's in the name? Good question. Um, everything on the website. Well, not everything, but most of the blends I'm trying to do is are going to have some type of connection to our wonderful program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm-hmm. So I believe Bill W. was meeting with an AA. I, I think it might have been AA number three. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, the guy's telling Bill, you know, every morning I wake up, swear off alcohol, and, you know, in a few hours I'm boiled as an owl, which is an old expression for drunk. So... Boiled Owl came to be. There it is. I love it. So, so that was alcoholic number three, Mikey. I think you're alcoholic number three million twenty-seven million two hundred forty-seven thousand yeah, right, right, right. three hundred twelve. It might have been. <laughs> it might have been. been. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so what's your pro? How many? Give us a snippet of your process. How selective you are. I mean, I'll give you my kind of uh, take on the uh, taste and experience of boiled out. But before I do that, could you just give us a picture of the process, what you go through, how you select your beans, how many roasters you have? That sounds kind of cool, right? And then question, Sober Dot Coffee listeners are responsive, right? If they want to buy and try boiled out coffee, are they going to, are you going to sell out, right? Like what's your capacity? Um, you know, I saw one or two already sold out on, on the website. So just kind of paint a picture of what things are like. Well, those two that were sold out are back in circulation. Um, so basically, Boom. the one thing I haven't had the opportunity to do yet was establish direct relationships with farmers. I haven't had the luxury of going to Ethiopia uh, or Colombia or Guatemala. I will join um, you. That, that <laughs> yeah. sounds like an awesome trip, right? <laughs> I, would I have been that. to Colombia, uh, Bogota. My good friend is from, you know, his wife is from there. But my point is, I don't have that luxury yet. So I had to. I talked to a lot of roasters who have much more experience than I. Thank you. I love that screen. I know. Yeah, yeah we, got the, we got the we got the website up in the studio here. It's really really yeah, it's beautiful. Yep. We're doing Colombian, which is probably one of our top sellers. Uh, Brazil. We have a pea berry that's really good. We have a Tanzania pea berry that's really good. Uh, we have Guatemalan and the Ethiopian yogurt chef is probably my favorite. It's just that's the birthplace of coffee. Mm. Uh, so I have those right now. And then I've been experimenting with, experimenting with blends for a while. So we have about three or four different blends. And then those are the names that I was mentioning earlier that are connected to our wonderful program. And I'm not going to tell you where it is in the book, but the Wombly's blend and the Cyclone Cellar blend. Oh. And there was another one. Oh my! Uh, we, tornado know cyclone. Cyclone. <laughs> we know the cyclone. We know that one. Cyclone we live that. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. So, I know there's incredible roasters, big roasters out there. I went to the coffee expo a few months back at McCormick Place. It was unbelievable. Um, and there's incredible big roasters, but I found that small batch roasting gives the most consistently great quality. So my roasters are small. Small meaning maybe a half a pound, third to a half a pound per roast. And I have about 14 of them. Oh, which wow. sounds kind of ridiculous. But I have, you know, I've got some emotional deformities I'm still working on for this program. So <laughs> might be a little obsessive. But anyway. So, so um, it's going to be hard to, to buy a thousand bags from you. Well, yeah, no. If I, a th- thousand pounds. Months, I'd have to say, give me, give me a few weeks. Because, and, and, you know, I won't keep beans too long maybe maybe right. a few months uh so then i've been roasting to order sometimes too but i do have a pretty good stock and i keep them in a nice dry cool place and i've tasted some of the bags that were roasted three four months ago and they're actually still really good 
I don't think I'd go further than that. Uh, but they're relatively freshly roasted. Um, my goal was to get a storefront soon, one day, God willing, and then, then eventually get a bigger roaster where I can do maybe, you know, eight to ten pounds at a time and not lose the quality. That's my biggest fear. Right. I'd rather if I lose quality, I'm not going to do it. I'd rather have people have to wait a minute or whatever. I'm not going to sacrifice the quality. So the small batch has been really good and the, the brands, you know, the different kinds I mentioned already. So these these different brands are all hand selected by you. It, it's all your brain power and your experience and your love and passion for and knowledge of coffee, right? Yes, but I'm also going with what the customers buy. And there's some that I think are great, but they're not being bought a lot yet. Um, you know, Colombia and Ethiopian and some of the dark roasts are, are pretty popular right now. And I'd like to get into some other coffees like Costa Rican and, and just experiment more. But yeah. These are what people are buying, and uh, I think they're very good. So, so let me jump in just from a brainstorm standpoint. When I go to a restaurant, right, and they have eight different kind of fish on the menu, and you know, six I know, or four I know, and four I don't know, <clears throat> I never order one that I don't know, right? Because because I don't want to blow and try something, mm -hmm. right? And, and so that's just me. So when, when I actually went on the site, I got Colombian because I know Colombian. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't know all these other ones. And, and I just, my personality, I just, I, I'd rather go with what I know and love it than branch out and say, eh, that was, a, that was okay. And other people are different. My wife would be the first one. She'd be like, to yeah, I've had, Col I've had Colombian. I'll go with Tanzanian, right? Tanzanian, yeah. Yeah, right. So, so if I could interject here for a second, because I, we're talking about coffee for the last five, six yep. minutes, right? But listen to, the, listen to the similarities in his sobriety story uh, to, his, to his work ethic, his work mind, his work approach, right? The quality of the coffee. Yep. And the one thing that really jumped out at me, and this is what I love about Stevie G, is your consistency. You know, I've known you for a few years now, and, and, the, and you're consistent. Um, and you're consistent about your approach to the program. You're consistent about your approach to life, you know, and you're real. And I just love that. I, I love that. And I love you read the, all that into that. I really did. Because, <laughs> because look, we're kind of living small batch quality right now. Right. Yeah. Day to time, small day, batch, day to right. time. That's no, right. I we're not, it. we're not living large. No, we're not looking it. to manufacture a bunch in, in a day. We're just looking to put out a quality product. Each day, small batch quality. I love it, Steve. Awesome, awesome. So, um, Steve, something very important. When when folks go on boiledalcoffee dot com mm -hmm. and they pick Colombian because that's what everybody loves Colombian. Coffee. Sorry, man. When 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 they pick ta Tanzanian, 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 um, ten percent of all the proceeds go to the nonprofit Arcosa. Uh, dot org, which is the sober living community and and service in Chicago, correct? Absolutely, and that's 10%. Pro, that's ten percent of the proceeds, not the profit. Right. Excellent. So that's fantastic. So not only do you get good coffee, you have a great cause. Okay, so we are drinking, and our engineer uh, and and guru Brian uh, got a pound, and Mikey got a pound of the boiled owl. Colombian blend of of May May twenty sixth. Oh, 26th. oh so, so it's a batch. It's a batch. Su it's like nineteen eighty three. Super fresh. Low. It's super yes. fresh batch. So brewed it this morning. I got a big pot in here. I got some uh, Yetis full of it in here. So I will give you my critique of the Colombian boiled out coffee. Okay, go. <laughs> and I I swear this is true. So I had it this morning in my chair while I was doing my meditation <clears throat> and it reminded me of <laughs> this is the truth it reminded me of when I was sitting in the Ritz Carlton uh, in London smoking a cigar it was that smooth that tasty mm. that much of a quality experience mm, nice and, and so wow. I mean it took me right there and, and I haven't thought about that place in two years <laughs> but you know boom so I highly recommend it. It's great stuff. So, um, can I give my two? <clears throat> yeah. So I've been a boiled out customer for a few months now, and uh, 
I can't say I date back to your origins of a year ago, but um, about <laughs> six months or so, I've been ordering it online, which, by the way, mm -hmm. if you order three or more bags, free shipping, just like Amazon. Sweet. Uh, I know, right? Sweet. So one-click purchase, free, sh free, free shipping. shipping. But anyway, um, I've, I've had the privilege of trying sampling multiple um, blends from you, uh, blends or, or, or products. And uh, starting out at Arcosa, when I visited the, the Sober Living House in, in uh, Chicago area here, I, I, it was when I was first introduced, and then went online and started buying it. And I can tell you, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what I think, because I think it's great, but my wife likes it. So that, now, you've, now you've gone somewhere. Now you've achieved <clears throat> something. <clears throat> Hit the bullseye. That's big. That's big. All right. So, uh, Stevie, they, they find uh, Boiled Owl at boiledowlcoffee.com. So I just want full transparency before we go into this next section. There's no money passing hands here, right? There's no sponsorship. There's no. There's nothing. I mean, I, I want everybody to know that about Sober Dot Coffee is that, you know, none of this is influenced by, by cash. Right. Right. Um, we do have some folks donate to our coffee kitty at times. Super grateful for them. Yeah, <clears throat> we don't make money on this podcast. We don't. You know, that's not what it's about, right? So I just, I just had to put that out there. So here's what we have. Um, we want to share the boiled owl coffee experience with our listeners. So we are going to supply five listeners with one pound of boiled owl coffee of their selection, okay? So they can pick any any of the available brands. That's correct. So first of all, we didn't talk to our attorneys about this, right? No, no. So we're going <laughs> to screw this up somehow, some way. I'm just right. telling you. So well, we did check with Brian, right, Brian? Are we legal? Yeah. yeah. So so show us some 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 grace here, right? So we are going to take, and you got to follow directions, right? Okay. got to pay attention. The first five people... That email us will get a bag shipped to them. Nice. <clears throat> now, here's what you gotta do. You have to email podcast at sober dot coffee. Okay. If you use another email address, good luck. We won't see it. Podcast at sober dot coffee. You need to provide your name, your address, <clears throat> so we know where to ship it. We need to know how long you've been sober, and we don't care if it's 45 minutes. We just want to know. And by the way, this will all be anonymous. We're not going to post nothing anywhere. Not, not, right. <clears throat> how long you've been sober, what your favorite episode is. Sober of, Coffee episode. Of Sober Dot Coffee okay. episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the Joe Rogan show. Well, I'm just Sober Dot Coffee episode. Check it's the detail. And then lastly, what is your favorite tool that you use for sobriety? I love that. So three things. One, how long have you been sober? Two, what's your favorite episode? And three, what's your favorite tool? So you got to put your name and address. Okay, so for the three pe five, pe five people who do five, that, they're just going to get a bag of stuff for free. They're going to coffee for free. You're, they're going to have to go onto the website, yep. and they're going to say, I want the Ethiopian Yigarasha Chef medium roast <laughs> pound, right? So they pick it, and, and you got to tell me which one you want in your email. Right. Now, here's a disclosure. Okay. Our intent is to deliver to the first five. Mm -hmm. We know that we have <laughs> international <laughs> listeners. Right. So I don't I haven't checked the custom laws. I haven't checked any of that stuff. If we can ship, we'll <clears throat> ship. Right. I don't want to end up. If in... I can't ship, maybe I'll fly there myself and hand it to you. I don't know the <laughs> custom. I don't know the custom. Our intention is to deliver, but I know we have Bangladesh and we right, have sure. the, the UK and yeah. we we have people all over, right? Tanzania, right? Um, so that's our that's our contest. It's not even a contest. I love it. That's our promotion, right? Is five one pound bags for the first the first five people that email. That's the easiest way to do it. First five people to do it. Name, address, uh, how long you've been sober, favorite episode, favorite tool, and what kind of bag you want. All over the country right now, there are people pulling off the expressway. 
to quickly fire <laughs> off an email. We are going to cause massive is, traffic that slowdowns. That is fantastic. So, um, and then lastly, for me, Stevie, love you, man. I just, I get so inspired. In, in fact, you know, I'm probably here today in part of following your leadership of being a sober soldier and the stuff and the missionary that you have been for our coast and, and for those seeking long-term sobriety for 32 years, man. You are such an inspiration to me. I have part of your DNA in me, and I appreciate that. And now you're expanding to Boiled Out. I've been to one of your potential locations, storefronts, excited about that. You know, I hope I can help you with that in some way. And, um, I mean, I just love being on the journey with you, including Boiled Out Coffee. Right. So I'm enjoying drinking it today. I'm enjoying having you on, and I'm enjoying promoting it and, and letting some folks enjoy it out there, too. Yeah, and I love you, man. I love your consistency. Uh, I just love what you stand for. I love your focus on small batch quality, man, in both in, in life and in liquids. Some, some, Thank you, guys. Some liquids. I love you, too. Some liquids. I got a lump in my throat. You got uh, a lump in my throat because of you. Thank you. God bless you. I really appreciate it. All right, Stevie G. It. Have Go, a great day, man. Great Go have a great day, man. Take care. Thanks for joining us for today's Coffee Chat. To contact the show, email us at podcast at sober.coffee. If you need immediate help, the AA hotline is 800-839-1686. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. Remember, Mike and Glenn are sharing their own journey on the path to recovery. Any suggestions, medical or otherwise, are their own experiences and should not be viewed as professional advice. See you next week, and remember, there is a solution.